A while back, a friend of mine wondered why Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door script isn't available online so people can see any dialogue they miss in their own playthroughs. I thought it was a pretty good idea, so I went and had a look at all of the dialogue stored in the Thousand Year Door's game disc and made a website to serve exactly that kind of purpose. During that process though, I found a lot of unused dialogue as well, way more than I was expecting and quite a bit of it I'd never seen online before. So to write that wrong, here is every piece of unused dialogue that I found. But first, let me start with a bit of a disclaimer. This is all of the dialogue that I personally identified as unused. It's possible that I missed a few pieces of dialogue, it's also possible that some of these might not actually be unused. I tried my very best to see each of these in game, but maybe I just missed a trigger for some of them. Also, this only includes the English dialogue. I'm sure the Japanese version has even more unused dialogue, and even the English version has some untranslated Japanese text in there. But I don't speak Japanese, so I've omitted most of these. If you're curious about those, I think you can find most if not all of them on the cutting room floor. And finally, the footage in this video shows me having hacked the dialogue back into the game where possible. It's just meant to be a visual aid. Unless they did otherwise, assume that the dialogue is not actually accessible in game. Anyway, let's get to the actual unused dialogue, starting with some of Gumbella's tattles. You may not have known this, but in addition to areas and NPCs, Gumbella is also able to use her tattle ability on certain interactable objects. Gumbaria could do this too in Paper Mario 64, but neither game ever tells you about this. An example of these tattleable objects are these big yellow and stone blocks. These are actually kind of special because Gumbella's tattle updates depending on which hammer you have equipped. They even have this line. You can't break this block without a hammer. Obviously, this one's impossible to see under normal circumstances. You start the game already having the hammer as a part of your base moveset. This wasn't the case in Paper Mario 64 though, so maybe at some point the Thousand Year Door was meant to start this way as well? This is a typical switch. If you jump on it, something should happen. This title doesn't belong to the red and blue switches you see all over the game. Gumbella has a different quote for those, where she tells you you can jump on it or use your hammer. According to the message's ID, this one was intended for something called a floor switch, which I guess you can't hammer for some reason? That's a road sign. I don't really have anything to say about this one. As far as I can tell, all signs in the game are just considered normal signs. Ha! I'm not telling you my secrets at the show, wait for the final version. This one's a placeholder area title. It was used in the E3 demo of the game. Speaking of which, here's another quote from E3. To the special stage. Apparently this one was spoken by the Pedalberg Gatekeeper, after which you'd be sent to the Super Bowser Bros minigame. By the way, did you know that in the post game you were originally intended to recollect all of your party members? There's dialogue about this for each of them, but only three had their dialogue translated. The first of which is Koops, who you'd pick up in Pedalberg. Mario, I'm so glad I got to see you again. So you're off on another adventure, eh? Yes, of course I'll go with you. Come on, let's go. Next is Flurry, who was back in her house. Oh, Mario, Mario, long time no see, sweetie. I finished my latest performance and I'm enjoying a well-earned vacation. Are you going on another adventure? Well, if you are, I will surely come along. After all, I must continue to improve upon my talents. I wonder what kind of drama awaits us this time. And finally there's Yoshi who would be waiting for you in the Glitzbit lobby. Hey what's up, Gonzales? I knew you'd come eventually. We're going on another adventure, right? Yes! I'm all over it! Let's give that great big world another left jab. Oh yeah, I registered us at the Glitzbit again. We can be champs again. For the sake of completion I'll include the other party members, but keep in mind these are fan translated. Gumbella would be waiting for you at Professor Frankly's house. Whoa, Mario, you're back. That's awesome. You know, I was just thinking of meeting you again. So, like, why don't we go do some more adventuring? Yeah, totally. Count me in. Great to see you again, Mario. Vivian would be in Twilight Town. Mario, it's like a dream come true to see you again. Of course I'll go with you. I'll follow you wherever you want to go. Nice to see you again. Admiral Barbary is on Kill All Key, of course. Well now, is that you, Mario? Fancy meeting you here. Even I have found myself paying a visit to this island on occasion. What? You're venturing forth once more? Hmm. 
Well, isn't that fortunate? Take me along then. I'm simply overflowing with gratitude towards you. If there's any task I can accomplish, just say the word. Now then, let us away, Mario. And finally, there's Miss Mouse at the lovely house of badges. Oh my, it's been so long, my handsome mustachioed mister. I've been yearning for a reunion ever since we parted. Could it be a re-embarking on an adventure? That's what your expression tells me. You needn't say a thing, I'll happily go along with you. Now, shall we depart? Alright, back to the officially translated stuff. Here's an email made for testing purposes. Designer, Paper Mario and Paper Mario 2 3D level designer. Big gamer, gets restless when not gaming. Can't tell difference between Brett and Bert. Sadly, this email doesn't have a subject or sender, so we'll never know who this legendary big gamer was. Next up, we've got some battle stuff. Remember the do nothing command from Paper Mario 64? Yeah, that used to be in the game. I assume they removed it because defend is basically the same thing, but better. Now, I know this is a weird one, but I can't find any place this message triggers. In the real game, the game says can't flee this fight at the start of an event battle and can't select that when you try to select a run away option anyway. So when is it supposed to say can't run away then? I don't know. My best guess is that maybe there was going to be a status effect that prevented fleeing, like mean look in Pokemon. Or maybe it is used somewhere and I'm just an idiot, that's a possibility. An unused status effect I do know exists, it is zero gravity. This would give you the message, you can barely move. Sounds like it would have been an annoying status, I'm glad it's gone. There's also an unused message for a status that does exist. Using Holdfast with Bobbery originally gave you the message, you're a bomb counter. Now it just says, direct attacks will be countered, which is the message for any counter status effect. There's two unused enemy titles, but they're not scrapped or anything. These were obviously never intended to be in the final game. The first one is Unused Message, Global 716. For some reason, this one is specifically assigned to Magnus Van Grapple's Rocket Fists. Secondly, we have That's Dupless, Report This as a Bug, Global 796. This is the title dialogue for Dupless during the second fight when you're not supposed to have Gumbella in your party. If you were hoping for some actual unused tattles, I can at least offer you one thing. The tattle log in the journal menu has exactly one entry that goes unused. It's for the fuzzy horde, which in the final game just gives you the normal fuzzy entry. It reads, max HP 20, attack 1, defense 0. A completely crazy horde of fuzzies that attack en masse, basically a swarm of scary blackness. You know how when you first go to a shop, the shopkeeper there will explain the shop point system to you? Well, each and every shopkeeper has their own version of that speech. Here's the thing though, you need to buy a contact lens to get to the west side of Rogueport, so every speech from a shopkeeper beyond that point is effectively unused. You can use a glitch to get to the west side without buying a lens, which means you can see the west side goods and deep down depot speeches yourself without hacking the game. But buying from west side goods is required to access chapter 3, which means the other shops are still inaccessible without visiting another one first. Anyway, I'm not gonna read each of those speeches, they're effectively the same thing, just worded a little differently. I've been showing some of them while I was talking, but if you really want to see each and every one of them, just visit my website. It's in the description, I promise it's not that interesting. Shops have one other piece of unused dialogue, and this one's kinda strange. It's for when you buy an item. The message would be them saying thank you, followed by a second message telling you your new shop point total. Except some of them phrased it as if it would show you the points earned from that purchase instead. Either way, I can see why they cut it. One extra message every single time you buy something does add up over the course of the game. But the way they went about fixing it is just odd. You'd think you'd just remove the second message and be done with it, right? No. For some reason the devs made the dialogue intended for when you sell the last item in your inventory display instead. You can see it is for yourself. In any shop, sell the last item in your inventory and then buy something. The message will always be the same for both actions. Anyway, like before, I've shown you the dialogue on screen, so I won't bother reading them to you. If you're listening to this video podcast style, I promise this will be the last time. I just don't want to make this part boring and repetitive. Well, that's about all the dialogue that can be considered global in some way. Let's look at the rest of it by area, starting with Rogueport. 
Have you ever noticed that Podley's dialogue stays the same for half the game? Probably not, but he has this dialogue for the first four chapters of the game as well as the prologue. Then, from the fourth intermission onward, it updates every chapter. I think the devs made it that way because players had trouble finding the end. Even if you remove the dialogue he has in the first half of the game completely, there's still enough cut dialogue here for every chapter, so I don't know how these would have been spaced out if the dialogue in the first half wasn't a late addition. Each of these starts with, Welcome to you and yours, have a seat. And then, for each chapter, the second message is, This is Potley's place, a friendly spot where folks can cast off their troubles. This is Potley's place, an oasis of refreshment in the often bleak desert of life. This is Potley's place, a romantic spot where love blooms in the shadows. This is Potley's place, a hip spot that still retains the nostalgic charm of yesterday. Now here's one I feel has to be in the game somewhere. Hey hey, did you know? Tills claim that locked away in that very chest is the mighty weapon a great man used to defeat a huge, frightening beast. Almost certainly, this is something some NPC would say after chapter 6 before getting the Ultra Hammer. It's like a hint that you can now finally get that chest, but I could not get this dialogue to trigger. If it's really unused, I wonder why. Thank you very much. This dialogue belongs to the badge shop clerk. I'm not sure when it's supposed to be used, but I assume it's for when you buy a badge. For some reason he doesn't say anything when you do. I wonder if it's a bug. Very well, I've told you this one before. Perhaps you remember it. This one belongs to Grifty. When you ask him to repeat a story you've already purchased, he says something very similar to this, except it includes the story's name. The Pianta Syndicate's dialogue doesn't change until they become plot relevant in Intermission 2. They all just have one set of dialogue each if you get to the office before you're supposed to. However, they have dialogue that was probably supposed to be seen if you got to them as soon as possible, which would be after buying the contact lens after Chapter 1. It's very close to the dialogue they have in Intermission 2, so if you think you've read this before, I assure you it's not the same. Don Pianta would say, what do you want, huh? Do you know this is the Pianta Syndicate office? Unless you got business with the Pianta, scram! Vinny says, hey, this is the office of the Pianta Syndicate. Don't tell me you don't know that. For some reason, Tony has two unused pieces of dialogue before this point. If you got no business here, then scram! If you got no business here, scram a lamb. Next, both Vinny and Tony have dialogue that's exclusive to Chapter 5. You're stuck on Kilal Key during that time, but you can use a glitch to leave the island and check on them. It's the same glitch I mentioned earlier that lets you skip the contact lens, so I guess I should briefly explain how to do this one. In these warp rooms below Rogueport, if you manage to jump into the water as soon as you gain control, the game will not have had enough time to determine what location Mario's position should be reset to. As a result, Mario will land on the room's origin, which happens to be on top of these big blocks. This allows you to pass on through to the left to West Rogueport, but more importantly for this instance, it lets you activate the warp pipes early, which will allow you to warp off Kilo Key during Chapter 5. If you do that, Vinny and Tony will tell you the following. Hey, you again, how's tricks? Listen, lately the boss ain't been doing so well. I'm a little worried. Hey, it's you again. How's about you pay your respects to the boss? He ain't been feeling so hot lately. It really sucks that these lines went unused, because it's foreshadowing a future event. It would have been a nice detail for observant players. Oh, and Don Pianta himself has no dialogue at all for this game state. It just starts a cutscene that immediately ends. I'm so completely sorry, we're all out of prizes. Lala, the boo running the Pianta parlor, would say this if the parlor was out of prizes, which I'm pretty sure is impossible. I don't know if there's a limit on batch prizes, but I can't imagine there being a limit on cake mix. I can't adjust your abilities right now, sorry. Chet Rippo is supposed to say this when all of your stats are maxed out, but that's not possible. You'll reach the level cap before you can max out all three of them. It seems like maybe Merlovely was meant to tell you where to find badges too at some point. I say maybe because there's actually only one prediction that points to an in-game badge, which is this. I see a badge. It's called something. Dazzle has it. There's predictions for other badge locations too, but these point to badges from Paper Mario 64. Here's the weird part though. These predictions aren't the same as the ones in that game. The original predictions were more detailed and the badge names used here don't even match the locations they were originally found in. Anyway, here's the other predictions. I see a badge. It's called something. 
It is on sale in Rolf's shop in the plaza near the castle gates. I see the close call badge. On the staircase from Cold Cold Mountain to the Sanctum, you go to the back and find a red question block there. You hit it to get the badge. I see a flower saver badge. On the clouds above flower fields at the top of the bean tree on a cloud. You reach the white cloud and see it there. I see a quake hammer badge. Down the pipe in Toe Town, down below to the right, past the broken block. It is in the chest there. I also see an enemy there that you must defeat. I see an attack FXA badge. In the volcano near the room with the hammer, you go downstairs from the dam. The path blocked beyond the metal block, hidden in the chest where the lava flows. Predictions for the power bounce and dizzy stomp also exist, but they're assigned to the exact same volcano location. Hey, I'm a peddler. I pedal. This dialogue is from the pit of 100 trials. It's just that, no menu options, no reactions to having bought their goods. So this peddler NPC probably didn't get far into development. They probably cut it in favor of Charlatan, who shows up in the intermediate floor sometimes. Speaking of which, Charlatan has some unused dialogue specifically for the pit of 100 trials. Thank you so very much, you got yourself a good deal there, I kid you not. You are set for the future with that item, my man. Come back real soon. This sounds like it's supposed to trigger when you buy an item that leaves you with a full inventory, because he doesn't ask you if you want to buy anything else. Normally in the Thousand Chidor, shopkeepers check for that sort of thing and end the conversation rather than asking if you want to do something you can't do anyway. Charlatan doesn't have this check and asks you regardless. It's not until you attempt to buy another item that he'll realize your inventory is full. Here's something interesting. Apparently the Pit of 100 Trials was going to have so-called trick devices that modified battles. Here's what they would have done. The device on this level is now active. You now receive double coins after battle. The device on this level is now active. You can no longer use your jump in battle. The device on this level is now active. You can no longer use your hammer in battle. The devices on this level are now active. You can no longer change your allies during battle. Along with the peddler from before, it really feels like they had bigger plans for the pit than what we ended up with. At the start of the pit's final battle, Bonetail lets out a howl and your active party member reacts to him. But for some reason, there's a second set of partner reactions. Not sure when it would have been used. Before the battle, maybe? W what's this guy's beef? Um, what's going on? My, what's this? What's with this dude? Wh who's this person? Who's this twit? What's this fellow's problem? Before we leave Rogueport completely, here's a cutline from the ending cutscene. When Petunie hands Peach her mushroom, she would have said, Yep, here's one for Peach. Not to be a total downer, but our attacks don't seem to be working, Mario. If we don't attack with more powerful moves... You may think this dialogue was meant for when you're struggling against the bald clefts, but no. This dialogue is actually stored in the area before the bald cleft room. This is where you'll first encounter Koopa Troopas, which are the first enemies with a defense stat. So maybe this was supposed to appear if you somehow struggle with those. Wow, what's the deal here? Our attacks don't seem to be doing any damage at all. I think maybe we ought to retreat for the time being, Mario. Come on, let's go. This one was intended for the bald cleft fight. And presumably, if you did retreat from that fight and went back to Pedalburg, the gatekeeper would tell you this. Huh? Did I hear that right? The stone monster appeared? So the stories were true. You'd better go and buy some items then. You know, just to be on the safe side. Yep, that'd be the smart move. And the shopkeeper will be psyched to see you too. When you approach Hooktail Castle for the first time, your active party member comments about it. However, there are two alternate versions of this intro. In the first one, your partners will add, So Mario, you think whoever's controlling all these guys is around here somewhere? Or, um, hey Mario, do you think that whatever is controlling all these things is lurking around here? I have no idea what this means. Are they talking about the dull bones? The fuzzies? Chapter 1 must have looked pretty different at some point for this dialogue to be here in the castle garden. The second unused intro is one that only Coops has for some reason. By the way Mario, the bridge is out up ahead. First, go in this building and use the jump platform to go to the second floor. Stand on the pedestal on the second floor and press Y to become a paper airplane. 
I wonder if this was used in a demo or something, otherwise it's pretty condescending to the player. In the post-game, Doe T will leave a request for help in the Trouble Center. After you complete his task, he will be standing by the Great Tree and talk about it. Since it's already the post-game, this dialogue doesn't update, but Doe T actually had two different things to say. The thing he says in the final game, and this. So, this is the Great Tree. How much history has this Grand Tree witnessed in its many long years? And how many more amazing events will it witness in the coming years? Indeed. So beautiful. This tree that has surpassed the lives of many creatures. Scary. At the end of Chapter 2, you fight Lord Crump piloting a mech called Magnus von Grapple. Like most bosses, Crump will say things over the course of the battle when he reaches certain HP thresholds. Two of those go unused. Here they are. Oh, hey, you guys aren't too shabby. Well, sorry, but you've left me no choice. Prepare for my finishing blow, chumps. Power reserves are at 120%. Hmm, okay. Eat this! Alright, now we've reached the big one. Glitzville has the most unused dialogue by a wide margin. I hope you like this chapter because we're gonna be here for a while. The Ratui businessman has a really annoying side quest that sends you around the world to count chairs. Whenever you talk to him before completing the quest, he explains which chairs he wants you to count. He was going to be one of those, do you want me to repeat what I just said, NPCs. However, the dialogue for this is incomplete. For example, the part where he asks you that question is missing, but the menu is there. If you were to say yes, he would say, alright, I'll say it again. Then there'd be more missing text, followed by, I know that's a lot to ask, but you gotta help me. Glitzville has a couple of NPCs who disappear after some time, but they still have some dialogue for things that happen after they already left. The Traveling Sisters 3, for example. They leave the moment Chapter 3 ends, but they have this dialogue meant for after Chapter 3. Did you quit as the champ? Hey, wanna get married? Can I touch your mustache? Then, if you were to rejoin the Glitz Pit after Chapter 3, they would say, It's the champion, he's back! Gonzalez is the man! Can I touch the stash? And if you then fight your way back to the top and become champion, they say, Here comes the champ! Let's get married, for real. Please, that stash. The pre only has one set of unused dialogue for after chapter 3. Ah, Monsieur Le Moustache. I do not know how, but the hole in young Mademoiselle's heart has already been filled. How unfortunate that she is resistant to my fabulous charms. Miss Mouse disappears before the end of chapter 3, so she has unused dialogue for when you become the champion during that chapter. Hello, my mustached hero. I had a feeling you'd win, and you proved me right. But I still smell something foul. Someone's after you. I can just feel it, sweetie. You know why? Because it's me. I'm after your heart, sugar. I will steal your love. And there's even dialogue for her for after chapter 3. You did it, Mr. Mustache. Way to put things right. You are such a man. My little Mr. Mustache. Until we meet again. In the glitz bit, there are 8 audience members you can talk to. But there's dialogue for a whopping 12 more. These audience members' dialogue updates at the same points as the ones that were actually used, which are when you're unranked or in the minor league, when you're in the major league, and when you're champion. Let me just rattle all of these off. Again, each set of three is one NPC across these different ranks. The Goomba Bros used to fight fair, but poorly. Then that long losing streak changed them for the worse. I used to be a fighter here. Hey there, Gonzalez. You think you can be champ? There's a phone booth in Glitzville, you know. Hey champ, any idea why phone booths are always see-through? You having fun? Just being unbeatable doesn't make you a champion. You gotta fight hard and win hard. If not, you'll never climb the ranks. Hey, Star Rookie. You're an okay fighter, but you gotta thrill the crowd more. If not, you'll lose the fans. Hey, if it isn't a champ, congratulations on finally making it, but you gotta keep that crowd happy, hear me? Hey you, tell me something. You believe in miracles? Hey fighter, what do you think is more important? Winning or getting noticed? Hey you, do you think you're a real champion? I may look like a diehard fight fan, but I'm actually the star reporter for Glitzville Sports, which we shortened to Glispo. Whoa, hey, hold on! I've got the morning headline for the Glispo front page. Rumors of Rockhawk's extraterrestrial origins unconfirmed. That's gold! 
I may look like a diehard fight fan, but I'm actually the star reporter for Glitzville Sports, which we shortened to Glispo. Oh, hey, hold on, I've got the morning headline for the Glispo front page. Mustache Marauder Gonzalez in romantic tangle with fans. That's gold! I may look like a... okay, you get the idea. Gonzalez cheated to the championship? Will he lose his belt? That's gold! I may look like a diehard fight fan, but I'm actually the star reporter for True Sports, which we shortened to Truespo. We're way better than the gossip rag Glispo. Listen to tomorrow's headline. Goomba Bros are actually quadruplets? Score! I may look like a diehard fight fan, but I'm actually the star reporter for True Sports, which he shortened to Truespo. We're way better than a gossip rag Glispo. Listen to tomorrow's headline. Hot dog vendor arrested in egg smuggling ring. Score! I may look like a diehard fight fan, but I'm actually the star reporter for Glitzville Sports, which he shortened to Glispo. Whoa, hey, hold on. I've got the morning headline for the Glispo front page. Gonzalez and Gumbel elope. That's gold. What does one gain by fighting? Is it better to be wounded and win, or to be healthy and not win? Fans and fighters are after different things, but desire comes from the same place. Who do you root for? I'm an Adonis Twins fan. They've got invincible bodies and super sharp spikes. They're the best. You're a fighter, right? Why don't you get some spikes like the Iron Adonis Twins? I bet that would help. Yeah, do it. Watching that fight with Rockhawk totally moved me. I'm your biggest fan. I'll be at your next match, so wave at the stands. Everybody wants their favorite fighter to win, but these fans would never get into the ring for fear of getting hurt. Me neither. You're a new competitor, right? Well, good luck. But don't get any ideas, you'll never beat Rockhawk. I think that watching you fight has actually changed people's lives. Like me, I've decided to become a stronger person. Catch the Glispo today? They had some hilarious headlines. I saw the Glispo today. You're really something. What? <laughs> Nothing. I saw the Glispo article. You've been busy, huh? Maybe we need a new champ. Listen, you puny wimp. You better run home and wrestle your cat. Hehe, <laughs> how was it? That was my impersonation of Rockhawk. Not bad, huh? Dreams are what make us feel alive. Hoo-wee. <laughs> That was my Grubba impersonation. Not bad, right? Stay out of my private life. Heh <laughs> that was my Great Gonzalez impersonation. By the way, great costume. Where'd you get that hat? It looks just like his. That looks painful. I wonder if you'll end up like that someday. I believe everything I read in Glispo because I am very, very stupid. I don't want to end up like that. No, sir. Time is money, man. I believe everything I read in Truspo because I happen to be a blithering idiot. Boy, these devs really do not like tabloids, huh? I mean, I don't blame them, but maybe this last ones were a bit on the nose. Still, it's interesting that Glissville had two competing magazines which have been completely wiped from the script. Makes me wonder if the wrestling mag you get from Jolene in that one side quest was meant to be Glispo. A lot of your time in the glitz pit is going to be spent in the arena, where the dialogue is pretty structured. Your opponent is introduced, they give you a pre-battle message, and if you lose, they have a win quote. Let's have a look at those now. For example, the Goomba Bros win quote you see in game was actually only supposed to trigger if you lost the first match. After that one, it was supposed to be changed to, guess you underestimated our bros power, huh punks? The Iron Adonis twins have a whopping three unused victory quotes. Better work out and bring it again next time. Blah. No one can match the power of pure iron. Go home, put some ice on those bruises and come on back sometime. That's far from the only cut dialogue relating to the Adonis twins though. There's a bunch of elements relating to the intro strewn about the arena script file. Firstly, there's an alternate introduction from Grubba. Our next battle is between the Merciless Executioner, Great Gonzalez, and the Metal Monsters, the Surly Sculpted Savages, the Iron Adonis Twins. Next, when the Armored Harriers walk on stage, there's a different audience reaction. Spike time. Spike time, alright. Prepare for spikage. And right before the battle, this line goes unused. The fateful battle's here, the bell's finally rung. These pieces aren't stored together though, so it doesn't seem like they were meant to form one singular alternate introduction. 
If you've actually played the Thousand Shador, I'm sure you remember that when King K disappears, he's replaced by Sir Swoop and his team, Wings of Night. What you may not know is that near the end of the chapter, Bendy Andy's team is also replaced by a new team. This one's called the Destructors. You'd have to derank a lot to see them, because after you beat Chapter 3, King K and Bendy Andy rejoin the roster and these replacement teams disappear forever. And yet, for some reason, these teams received unique intro and victory dialogue for After Chapter 3. Just to be clear, the only fighters to receive dialogue specifically for After Chapter 3 are the Iron Adonis Twins and Rockhawk. You know, the two most important fights in the roster. So why did the only other post Chapter 3 dialogue go to the two fighters who can't even use them? It makes no sense. Anyway, if you could fight Wings of Night after Chapter 3, Sir Swoop would say, I know you're ranked higher than me, but I'll try. And if you then lost, he'd say, Hey, I beat someone ranked higher than me. Wow, cool. See you next time in the ring. Similarly, here's the intro and victory quote for the Destructors. You'll be sorry you drew us for this match. Ah, bad luck, huh? Or maybe you just got a bad partner. <laughs> Next, we have an intro and win quote for a fighter who doesn't even exist. Now I'll give you some nightmares. How is that for you? Pretty sweet dreams, huh? There's no name or enemy data associated with this text, so it's anyone's guess what this fighter would have actually looked like. Daisy's just seems like the obvious pick, since there appears to be a sleeping theme here. We got ourselves a winner, Father 21. We got ourselves a winner, Fighter 22. You know, since the English version of the game does contain untranslated text, it really makes me wonder why obvious placeholder text like this did get translated. Now, in terms of fighter intros, there's one more character we need to talk about, the champ himself, Rockhawk. First of all, during his introduction, while you're locked inside the Major League locker room, he was at some point meant to say, Oh yeah! before heading on stage. Later, once you make it to the stage, there's an unused audience message saying, Fry this guy. This one was replaced by a copy of the You're Late message. Also, while you're fighting him, Rockhawk was going to say, You scum! at some point. Finally, there's dialogue for challenging Rockhawk after beating him once, but before beating Chapter 3. This isn't possible in the final game, as X shuts down your terminal for the rest of the chapter after you become champion. Next is today's main event, a row between the formerly undefeated Rockhawk and the champion, the only man to defeat the Hawk, the Great Gonzalez. We aren't gonna lose to scrubs like you. Gonzalez, I'll have the champs belt back no matter who I have to rock. Get yourselves ready to... BATTLE! Alright, that's enough of the arena for now. Let's have a look at the locker rooms. When you beat Rockhawk for the first time after Chapter 3, the message for obtaining the belt was originally going to be displayed in a system message box rather than the standard item get message. Now if you've looked into unused dialogue from the Thousand Yodor before, you probably know this scene. This scene plays after you beat the Armored Harius for the first time, which is impossible to do without Yoshi in your party. That means that the dialogue your other partners have in this scene goes unused. In fact, if you hacked the game to get there with Koops in your party, he's missing a message. Does that mean the dialogue is unfinished? Actually, no. This missing piece of dialogue exists in the files. The only reason this doesn't show up in game is because of a typo in the game script. The ID for this message is missing an underscore. If you put the underscore back, there it is, the missing message in all its glory. Here's the scene in full, featuring Goombella. Uh, yeah. What, no hellos? These guys are totally freezing us out, Mario. Stutley guy, coming through. Listen up, losers. I've been hearing about some rising star tearing up the league. It's you, isn't it? Yeah, you fit the bill, skinny. A mustache named Gonzalez. Man, I come all the way over here for you? Ha <laughs> ha What a waste of time. What? What's wrong, Mario? What? Are you saying the champ's belt? What in the- Hey, you! Get too close to the hawk and you might get rocked! You're totally right, Mario. This crystal star is a fake. Hey, you think you can just smack talk to rock hawk? I don't think so! You got some guts calling my belt a fake, you shrimpy no belt having wimps! Didn't your mama teach you any manners? Sheesh, sorry Mr. Birdie. I didn't mean to say your belt was a fake, take it easy. Stop making fun of me, punk! You're alive only because we ain't in the ring right now. If I see you under those lights, I'll tear you apart. 
Remember to rock! I think I tweaked him out a little bit. Anyway, we have a problem now. The map definitely pointed to Glitzville. If that thing on the champ's belt isn't a crystal star, then where the heck is the real one, huh? Mario, your mailbox SP just went off. Who'd you get mail from? What? Who's this X guy? You think he really knows about the crystal star? Whoever he is, why would he want to give us information? I don't trust this guy. And here's just the partner dialogue for Coops and Flurry. Um, judging by the dead silence, I'd say these guys don't like us much. Um, what's up Mario? What, are you serious? The champ's belt? Mario, you were right. This crystal star is a fake. Um, gee, sorry man. I didn't mean to insult your fancy belt there. Oops, I made him mad. Well, forget him. We have bigger fish to fry. The map pointed to Glitzville, but if the gem on that guy's belt isn't a true crystal star, then where's the real one? Um, Mario, you hear that? I think you just got an email. From who though? Um, who's this X character? He talks like he knows all about the Crystal Star. Why would someone want to help us with this anyway? Seems kind of fishy. Oh dear, these fellows don't seem quite as friendly as the minor leaguers. Mario darling, what is it? Come again, the champ's belt you say? My stars, it's completely true. This Crystal Star is a fake. Oh, I do apologize, sir. I didn't mean to embarrass you in front of your belt. Oh dear, I do believe I made that chicken angry. In any case, we've larger issues to deal with. The map most assuredly pointed here. If the ornament on that fellow's belt isn't a real crystal star, then where in the world could the real one be? Mario darling, did I just hear your mailbox SP go off? Who in the world would be emailing you? My, who's this ex-fellow? He speaks as if he's an expert on the crystal star. What would motivate him to help us on our quest though? This seems suspicious. If you derank back to the minor league and then return to the major league, your partner has some dialogue to acknowledge that. But for the same reason as the rock hog scene, it's impossible to see this dialogue from anyone besides Yoshi. The Iron Adonis twins just aren't meant to be beaten any other way. Here's the other partner's dialogue. We did it Mario, sweet! We're back to the Major League, awesome! Yay, we did it Mario, we're back to the Major League, cool! Oh mercy, we've done it! We're back to the Major League Mario, delightful! The partners you get after Chapter 3 also have dialogue for this scene, even though it doesn't trigger outside of this chapter. You get a different scene there where your partner doesn't talk at all. We pulled it off Mario, we're back to the Major League, how nice! We've done it old boy! We're back to the Major League, smashing! Hmm, we did it love, we're back to the Major League, well done! When you enter the Minor League for the first time, all of the fighters there were going to have special dialogue only for that moment. You the new rookie dog? New mugs in here all the dang time, I'm telling you! What do you have ticking in your BOMB chest? I have the heart of a champion BOMB! Wreck. <laughs> Debut battle for you, huh? Pretty exciting. During Chapter 3, Master Crash and Kleftor had a scrapped response for if you rank down from the Major League back to the Minor League. Not sure why Sir Swoop isn't included in this. You're BOMB back to the Minor League? But you were our brightest hope, BOMB! Crack! That not like mustache! If you made it back to the Major League after this, the fighters there would have had something to say about it too. Falling to second league is an embarrassment. You have neglected your training. You're back? I guess there's no one in the minor league to really put up a fight, huh? Hammer users shouldn't fall down to the minor league. It makes us all look bad, man. You just came on back? Better make sure you don't fall back down again, baby. They also had something to say if you lost your champion's belt during chapter 3. Don't disappoint me, Gonzalez. The opponent I've been gunning for wouldn't slide back down like this. It's not like you to slide back down like this, what happens? You fell from the championship slot? Then I guess there's plenty of room for me to become champion. Hey champion, what do you think you're doing? We look up to you, man! Just so you know, special dialogue for deranking in these cases does exist after chapter 3. 
Also, you may have noticed some issues like missing line breaks and text that's just plain too big for the message box. That's not a mistake on my part, it's like that in the files. It's just a clear sign that this dialogue went untested. Remember how after reserving a match against him for the first time, King K would address you personally and wish you good luck? Apparently every fighter in both locker rooms was going to do this. Except for Bandy Andy, I guess he wouldn't have been in the room. Don't go easy on me because I'm a rookie. Bam bam, just come bam at me. Crack, mustache will regret messing with Cleftor. Hey, will you spar with me? Please, please? Even the Iron Adonis twins got in on this, even though you never actually share a locker room with them. Gonzalez, our armored bots get tougher every day. We've perfected our attack and our defense just so we could send you to Hurt City. Gonzalez, hear me now. You may have some skill, but I'm going to win today. Don't think I'm a pushover just because I'm small. Bring it on. We need to set it straight for good. Whose hammer is strongest, yours or mine? Let me show you the major league difference, my friend. After you beat King K, he tells you you got him good. You guessed it, everyone has a version of that one as well. I totally bombed. Bomb! Maybe I'm not the bomb, but I'll win next bomb time. Crack, mustache got lucky. You sure are strong, mister. I need to get strong too. Thanks for the inspiration. Go curses. Why can't we win? Crud. You, I underestimated you. If you can beat me, you must be skilled beyond measure. Gosh, you're super tough, but I'll be back, mister. How could our hammers lose, man? I just don't get it. Not too bad at all, baby. It won't be that easy next time, though. Uh-uh. And everyone has a message for when they beat you as well. Not even King K got to use this one. Hey man, don't sweat the beat me and the boys gave you. You got skills, dude. Next time, it could be you serving my crew up a double helping of pain. Who's the bomb? Bomb! That's what bomb you get. Come back for more bomb. Crack. Mustache weak. What's the matter, mister? You were going easy on me. Next time, fight for real. <sighs> now you see what we're really made of. It'll take you a few thousand years to find a chink in our armor, stinkwad. I laugh at you. My victory was clear from the start. I got a lot of power in this tiny body, Mr. Man. Don't go dissing me. Our hammers pound down the competition, man. Pow, pow, we'll take you anytime. There's a big difference between the Major League and Minor Leagues, baby. Learn it. By the way, since you've seen them pop up a few times now, the Iron Adonis twins also have unused dialogue for after Chapter 3, which once again is impossible, you never share a locker room with them. I've been waiting, Gonzalez. Today's the day you joined the Head Trauma Ward. So you're back, Gonzalez. I'll make sure you never get back to the Majors. In the Major League locker room, there's alternate dialogue for the toilet scene. You, you foul knave. Do you mock this league by emerging thus from the toilet? Hey, get in the ring now or you'll forfeit the match. You forgot your hammer in the toilet? You gotta be more careful with that thing. Locked in? Yeah, I hate it when that happens. No idea why that's here. Surely Rockhawk wasn't going to trap you twice. In the minor league, Jolene was supposed to have different dialogue if you spoke to her before reserving a match. Mr. Gonzalez, I said log into the terminal, not talk to me. It's right there. In the final version, she has the same dialogue throughout that whole tutorial. Speaking of the terminal, there's an unused promoter condition. Now listen, son. In this battle, I want you to win after your HP goes down to 5. Crowds do love a comeback, don't they? You better diggity dang believe it. Now get in there and take a beating for old grubba. Pay attention. In this battle, I want you to win after your HP goes down to 5. How exciting is that gonna be, hmm? The crowd will go berserk, I'm telling you. Now get in there and take a beating from me, alright? In case you haven't played the game, when registering a match in a glitz pit, the promoter will set a requirement you have to meet in the upcoming battle, which determines if you get to fight a higher ranked opponent next time. I can see why this one was scrapped though, depending on your max HP, getting down to 5 could be quite a pain. Backstage, you can run into Bandy Andy, who tells you about the 7 wonders of the glitz pit. As far as I can tell, his introduction is always the same after the first time you talk to him, but I found another intro. One of the seven wonders of the arena. I think I'm getting close to it now. 
Oh hey, speaking of which, you want to hear about the Seven Wonders of the Arena? I tried talking to him at every rank until he disappeared, but I didn't get him to say this one. If it's genuinely unused, I'm not really sure how I feel about it. I think I actually kind of like that his disappearance happens without warning. He's not always in the halls anyway, so you might not even notice his absence right away. Originally, the devs also gave you more incentive to talk to him more than once. <laughs> it wouldn't be fun telling you everything all at once. I will tell you a new story as your ranking goes up a notch. You know this locked door? Originally it would give you this message. The door refuses to budge, it seems to be locked. In the final game though, every locked door has the same message, including this one. This is the champ's room, you can't go in. This is a variation on the dialogue this guard actually speaks in game. Some guards change their dialogue when you become a fighter, so maybe this one was supposed to be used before you joined the roster? Or maybe it's the other way around, and the in-game one was meant to be before you become a fighter. The guards also have unused dialogue for when you're allowed inside of a room. Go on in, bub. Right in there. Right inside, sir. My theory is that originally you had to talk to the guards before they would step away, and these lines are for after they do. In the final game though, the guards just step away automatically when you approach. Mr. Grubba? Yeah, I saw him heading for the ring in a state of panic. After Grubba flees to the arena, almost every guard changes their dialogue to something like this. This one in particular belongs to the champion's room guard. It probably goes unused because his dialogue about granting access to the room was deemed more important. What makes significantly less sense though is this one. Mr. Grubba? Yeah, I saw him heading for the ring in a tizzy. This one belongs to the major league locker room guard. I have no idea why it goes unused. In fact, this is the only guard you have to pass on the way to the arena, so if any NPC should have had this dialogue, it would have been him. Anyway, when you do chase down Grubba and fight him, his battle was actually supposed to contain quite a bit more dialogue. Apparently Grubba would call out his moves before performing them, like some sort of anime character or something, which seemingly would have been followed by a grunt in one of those small dialogue boxes. Macho speed! Yeah. Macho build-up! Macho body! Macho footwork! Yeah! Macho charge! Yeah! Macho attack! Yeah! Macho body press! Macho lariat! Yeah! I'm really glad they didn't go through with this. I love Macho Grubba's dialogue during this fight, and I think adding all of these attack calls in there would have made people more likely to skip it. Did you know that some NPCs have different tattle information depending on what area they're in? I think most people probably just tattle every NPC once, if even that, but some characters like Dupree and the Traveling Sisters have new tattle dialogue every time they show up. They have a unique one for Twilight Town too, but the thing is, you never get to read it. They're only in there for the duration of Chapter 4. At the start, they're pigs, and after that Goombella isn't there to tattle them for you. Here's what you missed out on. Oh, are you kidding me? Not this goofy guy again. He follows us everywhere. And how does he know to show up before we get where we're going, anyway? Those are the Traveling Sisters 3. I bet becoming pigs wasn't in their travel plans. Hey, but do you think they even realized that they had turned into pigs? I can't let you pass without the mayor's permission. Sorry, I don't make the rules. This is probably what the Twilight Town gatekeeper would have told you in Chapter 4 if you talked to him more than once. Instead, the developers just used his initial dialogue, but without the part where your partner applies. Now, we all remember this scene, right? This reveal blew my mind as a kid. And if you're anything like me, you'll be able to quote Duplis's response to guessing his name wrong by heart. Wrong Amundo, little nobody, who'd name their kid that. Prepare for doom, slick. Yuck, yuck, yuck. And don't even think about running from battle here. No running. This line's been ingrained into my mind. Not only does it belong to a memorable scene, but you'll be seeing it more than once over the course of the chapter. The thing is though, you were supposed to only see it once. The first time after Vivian joins your party, the line was supposed to get changed to this. Wrong, this is too much fun. Yuck, 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 yuck. Are you even trying? Well, whatever. Get ready to meet your doom, slick. And every other time, it would have been this. Oh man, I love it. The joy never ends. Or does it? Yeah, I guess I should just get rid of you for good. Prepare to meet your doom. So, why was this changed? 
Well, in the first version of the dialogue, Duplass tells you not to run from battle, which these lines don't. I think maybe the deaths were afraid that if they didn't remind the player, they would forget running was an option? Now, after Chapter 4, we've got a similar situation to that Rockhawk scene from earlier. Vivian has to be in your party at this point, so the dialogue for your other partners goes unused. The conversation actually isn't that relevant, so here's every partner's dialogue by itself. Alright Mario, let's get back to Rogueport, okay? Well Mario, let's head back to Rogueport, huh? Are you quite ready Mario? Let's get back to Rogueport. Okie dokie Gonzalez, let's get back to Rogueport. When you're looking for General White in Chapter 7, you have to talk to this random Twilighter to find out where he went. Major Dower could have helped you too, he has the dialogue for it. But for some reason it just doesn't seem to trigger. Why, it's the savior of our town. It's Mario. Yes, actually, there was a General White around here for a little while. He seemed to be puzzled about something after his short stay and soon left. I'm afraid I don't know where. He was mumbling something or other about a cannon. Why this was scrapped is beyond me. If you're thinking that maybe playtesters were more likely to speak to the other Twilighter, sure. But they could have just had both characters tell you where to go. In fact, Battleberg does exactly this. You can ask this Koopa about him, or you can talk to Mayor Krupp. The Bowser intermission in this place has some unused dialogue too. While he was walking around, Lord Crump would have said, Oh man, I give up. In those small text bubbles. And apparently you also would have been able to knock on people's doors. I guess Bowser was just too bulky to reach those doors in the end. Nobody's home, really. Everyone left for the day. Please, 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 please. The mayor is out. He's most certainly not scared out of his mind, he's just out. Um, today is a holiday. Really, it is honest. It's National Not Get Eaten by Monsters Day. On the east side of Kilhol Key, you'll find Skull Rock. Here you'll have to solve a puzzle based on an old song Flavio likes to sing. While you're trying to solve the puzzle, Flavio just stands there, but he was originally intended to be singing, kind of like he does in Podley's place. You'd still need to talk to him to hear the lyrics though. In this place, Flavio's singing would just be represented by a bunch of music notes. By the way, Flavio only sings the relevant part once you start the puzzle. First he sings about the Skull Gem, and after you place the Skull Gem, he sings about the Stash Brothers. He does that until you open up the entrance, but there was actually one more step that didn't get used. After you solve the Stash Brothers part, but before you blow up the wall, Flavia would go back to singing the song in full. I'm not gonna sing that, but after the song he says, Hmm, perhaps Flavia should consider a singing career, huh? At the very end of chapter 5, after you defeat Lord Crump, the crew cheers you on. Like in the Glitz bit, there are duplicate messages here, and yet the number of unique messages that exist for this sequence matches the number of text boxes. These duplicates are taking the place of perfectly fine finished dialogue. The ones that got replaced are Yahoo! and Cola's on me! While on the Excess Express, you're tasked to find what Bob wants for his birthday. One of the clues you get is that he wants an autograph. Ziptoad exists as a red herring here. As a celebrity, you could easily assume that his signature is what Bob wants. But Ziptoad won't give you one. He says he only signs for chicks. And I guess none of your female companions count for some reason. But it seems like at some point it was planned for this red herring to go further. There's no dialogue of him actually giving you his signature. But Bob does have dialogue for receiving something that isn't a thing he wants. Nope, not even close. Hey mister, are you sure you're really a detective? Because the autograph is a key item, it's not possible to give him anything but the thing he actually wants. Riverside Station is a unique case. The elevator room is the only location in the game to have unused dialogue and no NPCs they could have belonged to. Since it's Riverside Station though, I think it's pretty safe to assume the dialogue belongs to a Toad Station worker. I guess there was supposed to be one indoors too. Thank you so very much. The drawbridge is down again. We can get the train moving. Have a good trip. I'm on guard here to make sure there's no more funny business. The station's exterior also has dialogue for a toad yelling all aboard. I mean, technically the final version does have a toad saying that, but it's not the same message. It's spelled differently. In 
in Pashli Heights, the station worker will check your tickets before allowing you to enter the train. This is just a formality of course, under normal circumstances it's not possible to even be in Pashli Heights without already having a ticket. However, there is dialogue for if you don't have a ticket, and it's actually not the same as the one you get in Rokeport. I'm very sorry, but we simply cannot let anyone board without a ticket. When you enter Pashli Sanctum for the first time, you'll witness Beldum stealing the Garnet Star. At the very start of this cutscene, there's an unused line of dialogue that reads Treachery, probably belonging to Pennington. Outside of Pashli Sanctum, there's a Toad who wants to meet Luigi, which leads into a side quest where you trick her by dressing up as Luigi. If you talk to her dressed as Luigi after this side quest, she'll continue to respond to your disguise. This response has an unused line at the start, which is, Huh? No way! Hee <laughs> And lastly for Pashli Heights, the Bowser segment has this unused line. Eek! M mommy Maybe it belongs to Bob after you tell him you're Bowser? In the release version, he runs away after that, so you can't talk to him again. When you enter the x naught Fortress for the first time, two elite x naughts are immediately alerted to your presence. This results in a small exchange, ending with one of them saying, So, let's get him? But there was actually one more line after that one. Yeah, let's get him, dude. I can't think of any reason this line would be cut other than simply improving pacing. Actually, there's another example of that here. During the fifth Peach intermission, Peach drinks a potion to turn herself invisible, and by the end, Tex tells her that she can undo the effect by drinking the green potion. After Peach puts her dress back on, she asks, let's see here, the green potion, right? And you regain control. Originally, Tech would have said, yes, please drink the green potion which would have been the third time that information was communicated to you. And there you have it, that's all the unused dialogue that I could find in the Thousand Year Door. I hope some of it served as an interesting behind the scenes look at the game. It definitely was for me when I was looking through all the in-game data. As I mentioned at the start of the video, the reason I looked into this was to build a website showcasing all of the game's dialogue. If you're interested, you can find it in the description so you can see all of the dialogue used and unused for yourself. I hope to eventually feature other games on there as well, of course. For now though, I need a break. Jesus Christ, you know how long this took me?